only with thine eyes shall thou see the reward of the wicked Israelites. Now, you know where I got that from, Psalm 90, 91. You can read that whole psalm, beautiful psalms, and that's talking about the destruction of this man's system. Now, when we look down, if we are delivered, if we are of the elect, if, we, if you're of the elect, you're going to be delivered regardless. So if we are, in fact, the elect, it says give diligence to make that call and election sure, and we get beamed up into the ship or the mountain or the father ship or Yahweh Shai, we're going to look, we're going to look in, out the windows. There's going to be some type, either the, well, one brother had a dream that the bottom of the ship was glass and we saw it right down there to it, which makes me think of uh, Revelation um, chapter 15, the first couple of verses. But, you know, according to Psalms 91, we will see people get set on fire. We, we will see the destruction. But at that time, the earth will, will shake and we will be up in the air looking down and in fear and praising Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now, if any nigga come up there saying praise Jesus, first of all, he ain't coming in the ship. But if he happens to slip, because he's so used to saying Jesus, the most I might open a porthole, porthole and send your ass in the fire. Which will praise the Lord too on that. Now, you got this black, this blockhead Benjamite, Benjaminite right here, which when you listen to her, she sounds like she was sent by uh, vocab. She watches vocab or she's sent by vocab. She's got that vocab gospel demon on her ass. So I want to, this is what I want to do. I'm going to make this short. And, and I'm going to say this, and I should have entitled this, this I, I should have gave this the, the title. I should have said, fuck the two thirds and your mama too. I don't give a damn about your favorite uncle, your favorite cousin. You niggas that don't get that don't get this truth and you get that karagma, fuck you and your mama too. Real talk. And that's a that, I gotta steal this from my man um Khalid Muhammad, which we used to talk to him all the time. He we used to talk to him all the time. He used to get, because of the Moss, I believe that was Moss number seven, it was right right around the corner from my school, and he used to actually come to the classes. And if I can find that video, which I doubt I can find it, it's a cassette tape where he's actually in the class learning. And he says that we are the Israelites. He, he had did a show with this English uh, documentary, documentary, whatever, however you say it, a, doc, a document maker, document, documentation maker. But anyway, uh, this Edomite from England, I believe his name was Lewis something. And um, he was interviewing Khalid Muhammad. And Khalid Muhammad actually mentioned, you should go check out the Hebrew Israelites. This is at the time that the school, this was after the split when they, and they had the school on 1941 Madison. So he went there. So that just shows you that uh, if you can find that video, it's on YouTube if you, if you can find it that Khalid Muhammad did know us and he did direct the gentleman to go to the school, to go to the Israelite school. We were the most prominent school at that time. So now, let me get my thoughts back. Anyway, I'm going to let you hear this blockhead spew out her venom and I'm going to break it down. I'm going to go, I'm going I'm to use, where am I? I'm going to use this here. I'm going to use the old, good old Bible, uh, what do you call it? Bible Hub commentary. So let's just listen. We're at twelve eleven, and it's from Sardinetta Star Studios. This was put up three months ago. Actually, descendants of the ancient Hebrew, ancient Israelites, because they don't use the word Jews a lot. Let's see the thing with our people, the ones that are dead set against it they get on the side of a vocab Malone and other people to curse us out because we're saying we're Israelites. So what do I say? I say, fuck you. 
And I'm going to praise Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai when I see your ass on fire. You, you, you worse than Esau because Esau is supposed to be doing what he's doing. Not you niggas. The only ones that should be coming up against us are the Edomites and the other nations. Who's the main one to come against us? Our own people. So fuck you, man. I'm going to say like West Studi. <laughs> There's a video of West Studi, the guy that played Geronimo in the movies. The, a cop pulled him over and he, he's a gadite because when they pulled him over, the, <laughs> the cop asked him for his credentials and he was drunk and he said, fuck you. Fuck you. He kept saying, fuck you. <laughs> and I saw that. I said, West Studi, Studi is a gadite, man. He was, he's a gadite. I'm watching these fucking blockheads. Where is this? Anyway, I'm watching these blockheads on TV. These political blockheads. This is a fucking joke, man. This place is done. This place is fucking done, man. Trust me. It's done. So let's listen. Please forgive me. Um, they use Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now that entire chapter in context is God speaking to the people of Israel and telling them that he is giving them these commandments. And if they follow these commandments, he will bless them. But if they do not, he will curse them. And in these cursings, God details a bunch of different things. Some of the things that God details, I'm going to read the key verses that they use. Chapter 29, the Lord will bring nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as eagles fly, a nation whose language you will not understand. I'm sorry. Let me bring that back. And she says the Hebrew Israelite, this this blockhead, this blockhead, she following vocab, man. Or people like vocab. And them motherfuckers are the enemy, for real. For real, for real. They the enemy, man. And when the Mosai get them, I'm going to praise Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Kakodash. For real. So let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. Fuck the two-thirds. Fuck them niggas. Them, any of you niggas that get that chip, fuck you. And your mama too. Unredeemable. So one of the key verses that I realized in my research that Hebrew Israelites use to kind of uh, perpetuate this idea. My research, like she researched it. No. She been indoctrinated by Vocab Malone. I could be wrong, but she sounds like a vocab vocab a vocabian i don't know why i said that that slaves who came from africa are actually the you got to learn how to hate the two-thirds you got to you got to learn how to hate the two-thirds because when they get jacked up and you have any love for them you might go ahead and help them i ain't helping you motherfucking two-thirds when you go hey when you go get them karagmas I'll be there to open the door for you. I said, go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> That's what we might just do that. If they got actually like places, you know, tent cities and all that where they give you the karagma, we're gonna be filming that shit. And we're gonna tell you, you know, you know what you did. You, you know, you, you know you done fucked up. Because once you get it, you cannot take it out. You cannot take it out. And you cannot ask the most high to forgive you. Descendants of the ancient Hebrew, ancient Israelites, because they don't use the word Jews a lot. Um, they use Deuteronomy chapter 12. Use the word Israelite, blackhead, because that's what the scripture says, Israelite. All right? Jew, really it's Yahweh, is really just a tribe. So why would we call ourselves one tribe, blackhead? They use the word Israelite because we're Israelites. It's 12 tribes to the nation of Israel. Blockhead. 28. Now that entire chapter in context is God speaking to the people of Israel and telling them that he is giving them these commandments. And if they follow these commandments, he will bless them. But if they do not, he will curse them. And in these cursings, God details a bunch of different things. Some of the things that God details, I'm going to read the key verses that they use. Chapter 29. And the Lord will bring nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as eagles fly, 
a nation whose language you will not understand. And what Hebrew Israelites say is that the mark or the, the national insignia for America and for Britain is the eagle. So they we say America and we say Rome. All right. Let me let me do this. Let me do this. Let me let me shut this blockhead up. The national sim symbol of America. Oh, the bald eagle. The founding fathers made an appropriate choice when they selected the bald eagle as the emblem of the nation. The fierce beauty and proud independence of this, are uh, proud, fierce, proud of this great bird aptly symbolizes the strength and freedom. Freedom for who? Freedom for who? So the, the, it's right there, the eagle, the eagle. Why, why did they accept the eagle as their sim, symbolic, uh, their symbol for America? Because this is Rome all over again. And they, they say America takes the eagle. I just proved it. I just went to, I just went to uh, the Google. Let's listen to some more from this blockhead. I have a point here. Let's keep reading. He says, a nation whose language you will not understand. And so their rationale is when they took these slaves from Africa, they came to these new lands, these nations, these new people that they came around, they didn't understand your language. Yeah, absolutely. Blockhead, absolutely. We didn't understand the languages. Now, if you saw the movie Roots, Blockhead, none of the so-called Africans from West Africa, they, they none of them knew the language. None of them knew the language, and they had to learn the slave master's language. They had to learn the slave master's religion. And she's batting her eyes like, huh, yeah, 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 they'll say that that's that we didn't. Yeah, and that's a motherfucking fact. Now, if you continue in that verse, you see things like God told them they would be cursed in the city, cursed in the country. Go anywhere to the go to the hood. Go to Jamaica. Go anywhere with Jake is for the most part. You got a handful of a small percentage of our people that are doing good doctors, lawyers, boule members, actors, but the mass majority of our people, they li live working class lives, and a lot of them are homeless. And a lot of them just are just making it from paycheck to paycheck. We're not blessed. Their basket will be cursed. Their knitting will be cursed. They will be economically depressed. Um, they, that sounds like a nigga to me. The foreigners will come in and do better than them. Than Go to any black neighborhood and look at the businesses. Go to Harlem. Harlem, the mecca of black people. Check out the businesses. Arabs, small hats, Moabites, Ammonites. Turkish people, we don't own the businesses. So how the hell we going? How the fuck we gonna call that our community when there's no money being circ circulated? Those people that come into your community, they take your money and they take it out of your community. It's not circulated, so that's a curse. Nations will come from all the ends of the earth, and and they will uh, pretty much oppress them. But in verse sixty-eight, this is the key one. It says. And the Lord will take you back to Egypt in ships by the way of which I said to you, you shall never see it again. Now, let me do this. Let, let's let the Google speak. Let's let prophet Google speak. You heard of prophet muscle? Well, let's deal with prophet Google. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Let's see what the Google says. What the Google got to say. Okay, now let's go to images. Wait a minute. Black life scattered with that. Shaved slave ships.
Let's, uh, I don't see no small hats, man. Let's click on this. Right, X, X seven and six, which they go off. This is not talking about America. Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty eight is talking about America. Israelites, Africans, Israelites, the white man, us auctioning blocks. They split families. Uh, where's the ships? They take they took them ships out, man. It's like they don't want us to know. These have all kind of images of different ships. The East I don't want us to know, man. Too many of us are waking up. Oh, here it is, way at the bottom. Way at the bottom. Salvation call to the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, Rabbi Lu, I shouldn't say that because they'll take the video down. Let me do this. Let me have a little fun with this. Let me go to 48. Let me go to 48. It says, yoke of iron upon thy neck, right? And they took a lot of that down, too. These have, man, there you go. Deuteronomy 28, 48. But it's talking about the JJs. When did they ever experience this? Never. Come over here. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. This didn't happen during the Roman Empire. We were tribute, tributary to the Roman Empire. You understand? Yeah, they took out most of these pictures, man. They took out most of these pictures. They had a, a big a single picture, this individual. And they know that too many Jakes is waking up. Ezekiel 37 in full effect, y'all. Yeah, they took out a lot of pictures, man. Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. Let me put yoke. Yoke of iron. Okay, they took out a lot of these pictures, man. They pulled them out. They pulled them straight out. Yeah, they're trying to suppress this truth. Let me try it this way. You can iron upon thy neck. A few more pictures, but they tell you they took a lot of pictures out. It's shackled up. 
auctioning block. They sold babies. The, the, the mother went to one plantation. The babies went to other plantations. The husband went to another plantation. The, black, the Bible is black history. Yeah, because we're the Israelites. Let me come back over here. I don't need this. This one, you had a full picture, this guy, without all his writing. And he's wearing a Hebrew long, long robe, Hebrew garment. Yeah, they're suppressing this truth. So let's listen on a little bit more. And there you shall be offered for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will buy you. <laughs> that never happened. What it meant by no, no one will buy you is no one will save you. No one will save you. No one will re redeem you or buy you back. They showed you that in the movie 12 Years a Slave at the end of the movie where this white man came down to redeem uh, Oliver Northup because he had paperwork on him to show that he was a free man in the North. And they had to make, you know, they had to put a white man in there to beat a hair. See, there's not all white, white people are bad, so-called white people. Because they had uh, this guy, um, uh, Tom, um, Brad Pitt, he helped him out. And then um, another white man helped him out. So the real savior, saviors of that movie was Brad Pitt and the under, other individual. And he showed, he, he didn't have to buy him back because he was never really a slave. He was taken into slavery as a free man, but he but the paper the paperwork the paperwork redeemed him. So when it says that no man will redeem you, no man is going to save you. The only one that's going to redeem you is our Lord, and He's not a man. He's coming. He said He will not meet thee as a man. So that's true. No man is going to redeem us, but an angelic force will redeem us. That's our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashayak. Now, what I realize is that this is a, a movement that really targets those ignorant because it can really captivate a Christian who's not versed in scripture. So a, this is the this is a fear of uh, you know, Christians leaving the church. And that's all all on YouTube, man. Put put Christians that le left the church. Could be here all night. Or don't understand how to read and interpret the Bible correctly. And that is by no means any disrespect to anyone within the Hebrew Israelite movement because some of these cats are very, very intelligent. But what I am saying is that a lot of the times you get sucked into something, and then when you're by the time you're sucked in, it's more easy to now teach you the doctrine. It's like the, just like they did to your blockhead ass. They suck you. You believe that the white man's God. That's why you defend this Christianity bullshit because you believe in heaven that God Almighty is a white man. You saw it in the, in um, the Star Trek movie. Remember Captain Kirk met God and God put some lightning on his ass? <laughs> you niggas gotta go. You niggas gotta go. She's an authority. She's, she's gonna help us, lead us back into the true light. Interpreted by that organization because you've already been sucked into ignorance. Read the Bible. Context is everything. Now, the first thing I want to say is that in relation to verse 49, so many other nations, apart from England and America, have an insignia of the eagle. That is just... Okay, well, that's good, too. All right, yeah, that's, that's true. But America has that symbol, carries that symbol. Rome carries that symbol. Even this right here, I'm going to breeze through it. It says, uh, this is pulpit, pulpit commentary. The description here, this is uh, for Deuteronomy 28.49. Deuteronomy 28.49. The Lord Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, 
as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. We didn't understand the Roman tongue, which is Latin, and we didn't understand the English tongue, which was of the people of America. So you would you would mention first and foremost you would mention you would mention uh, Rome, but now if you jump back to the forty eighth verse, the Romans never put us in yokes of iron. It was the Americans that put us in the yokes of iron. So therefore, this is. America, which is the new Rome, the rebirth of, of Rome. So now let me go to the pulpit. Okay, it says the description uh, here given of the enemy to whom Israel was to be subjected applies more or less closely to all the nations whom the Most High raised up from time to time, which is true. Because Deuteronomy 28 speaks doesn't speak about one event; it speak about speaks about going on the other nations to in, to invade Israel and chasten the people of, of their for their rebellion, right? Breaking the laws, the Chaldeans, uh, the Assyrians, the Medes. Uh, but there are f uh, features in the description which apply especially, especially to the Romans. And America is spiritual Rome. It's the second Rome, Roman Revelation 13. The deadly wound was healed. It says in the horrors delineated in the latter part of the section, verse 52 to verse 57, goes into uh uh, who, who they shall eat them secretly in the siege, uh, carry one's uh, thoughts immediately to the terrible scenes which transpired during the wars of what? Vespasian and Titus with the Jews as narrated by Josephus. It says, as the eagle flieth, the eagle was the common ensign of the legion of the Roman army. That's why America carries the eagle today because this is the second Rome. And by the Latin writers, Aquila, E, which is eagle. Also Aquila, Aquila is Latin for eagle. Aquila and Priscilla is sometimes used for a legion. Deuteronomy 28 and 49. Let's look at one more and I'll close. Right, right here. As swift as the eagle flyeth, the eagles of Rome may be alluded to here and of the Chaldeans. It is said they shall fly as the eagle that hateth to eat. But, but they say it's talking about Rome. Let's come down here. Uh, swift, swiftness of the eagle, Lamentation 419, but the Romans, no doubt, were chiefly intended. They were truly brought from far, from the end of earth. Rome is not that far from Israel. It's, it's actually talking about America. And Rome, the Roman armies came in and, and made that uh, that region, Palestine, a province of Rome. So they didn't come from that far. This is definitely talking about America. That's a great way to go. You can do the math, measure the, measure the, the, the time from America to Africa on a boat, on boats. This is no doubt what chiefly intended. They were true, truly brought from far which is America, uh, from the end of the earth. The end of the earth is not talking about Rome. The end of the earth is talking about the other side of the earth. Even the Lord said that you will prophesy even to the uttermost part of the earth. That's the other end of the earth, which is America. So what is the 49th chapter talking about? It's actually talking about, it alludes to Rome, but it's actually talking about America. Coming, uh, Vespasian uh, and Adrian, I gotta look him up. 
the two great conquerors and destroyers of the Jews, both coming from commanding, uh, commanding here in Britain, which is a province of Rome, which is part of the Roman Empire. The Romans, too, from the rapidity of their conquest, might very well be compared to eagles. Well, that was their symbol. There was a movie came out, and the title of the word was Eagle. It was starring this guy. I forget this guy's name, but it was a good movie. Uh, something, The Eagle. I think it was called The Eagle. And I saw the movie. And perhaps not without an illusion to the standard of the what? Of the Roman armies. The standard of the Roman armies are what? The eagles. What do they call it? In Hebrew, it's called a samak. A standard barrier. Standard bearer, excuse me. Which would have a flag. That's what, they, that's what these modern countries have, the flag. They get it from the ancient world. Because when you went and fought wars, you had your standard, standard bearer. Your in insignia. And what the Romans did was they had that eagle. Because of its pride, its fierceness, and its swiftness. As swift as the eagle flies. Standard of a nation that thou nor thy fathers have not known. We didn't know Latin, and we damn sure didn't know English. Roman armies, which was an eagle, and their language was more unknown to the Jewish Jews than the Chaldees, because we did trade with the Chaldees. We were close to the Chaldees people. Anyway, there it is again, it says Rome, the eagle, the Roman insignia, compare Matthew 24, 28, and consult throughout, uh, throughout the passage, the marginal references. Uh, uh, Jameson uh, Forsett Brown Bible con uh, commentary, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, um, the invasion of the Romans, they came from far, but the, the Americans came from even, even farther. The soldiers of the invading armies were taken from France, Spain, Britain. Oh, there goes your heads. France, Spain, Britain, Greece. It says, then considered the end of the earth. The end of the earth is on the opposite side of the earth. So that's not talking about Rome. It's talking about America. Okay, it says, on the standards of the Roman army was an eagle. And the dialects spoken by the soldiers of the different nations that composed that army were altogether unintelligible to the Israelites. Because you had a lot of Romans speak Greek. That's why they referred to the Roman Empire also as the Greco-Roman Empire. Anyway, I'm going to say Shalom.